let's say what five six so you go up five and a half inches so why because if this was an eight foot gun you'd put them what the fins in the back fins so however long it is and mm. feet and inches that's what you do in inches probably when I was like first got into surfing I just was instantly drawn to board design because I like to draw so I just like draw surfboards and fins and different versions of them. I would kind of just had fun with it and maybe did like one or two a year like after I was 14 or like me and my friend Robbie and Tyler Muma would like shape at Basham's like when we were like 15, 16. Shaped with like Midget Smith and Terry Martin and um, I mean, and I was kind of, I didn't really know the level of shaping he actually was at the time, like, you know, because he's made boards for Phil Edwards, Jerry Lopez, like, he probably had hand-shaped the most boards out of anybody when he passed, I'd mm -hmm. say. It was, like, estimated around, like, more than 80,000. All hand shapes. I think the best part of shaping your own board is you can think of an idea and then you go after it. Make what's in your head and there's no no person or anything in, in between you and the, the blank. No other form of communication except this, you know, and that's cool. And to get what's exactly in here on here, get as close as you can or best to your ability. The best times are when you're just lost in it and it's just like, it's all your consciousness, so it is like a meditation. Like that's my favorite time of shaping is when there's not any disruption. What's what you're, it's just like, that's all there is, you know, in the whole world at that time. Nowadays, there's so many types of surfboards, like where say, in the 60s it was longboards, in the 70s it was single fins, in the 80s it was, you know, all like one to three fins. 90s was, you know, short boards and like high performance, and then now boards are there's all different shapes, sizes, swallow tails. Like people are taking everything from all these different generations of surfing, putting them in a blender, and then yeah, there's like, you know, the technology side of it, which is there for the masses and the general public, but there's like always going to be you and your blank and your surfboard in a shaping room. It's cool, you know, and it's rad to see like young kids um, coming up now more than ever, you know? Like when I was a kid, there was like not many younger kids like shaping, but with through the internet, like a lot of kids were able to watch boards be made or like just with, you know, or just it's more accessible now and more accepted too for like our young kids are just getting into it at an earlier age, almost like surfing. It's like surfing is going to this like crazy time. Are you going like this or? Yeah, kind of like to blend it, maybe go like something like that. Yeah. And then you can go back like that. I don't know, just kind of feel it out. Well, everyone up here I'd consider like a friend, so it's pretty cool on that level where it's just like, we don't even really think about it, that w what we're doing, like, cause it's just natural. We all just love surfboards and love shaping them. So it's a lot of like-minded people, but we're all from different zones and do have our own approaches and our own backgrounds. Like Andrew grew up riding shortboards and I grew up riding longboards. Birch grew up riding shortboards and then gravitated towards like longboards and everything. And you know, and Zach's like young, 17 and he's already, you know, pretty good at both, you know, so it's like, it's cool to see just everyone's approach and how it's passed on just through surfing and like creative minds that they're just like, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna do it myself. It takes a certain type of person to figure it all out and wanna be in this room and with these lights on and make a board and be able to do it too and then ride it. Okay.